outdoor uh, sort of patio there. So this was the front part of where the uh, restaurant was. Oh, I'm going the wrong direction. Oops. All right. Let me keep going there. All right. So now you get a better feel for this is where the building was previously. And all this got uh, dug up and it was a new foundation. So that's going to be a new outdoor uh, patio. Nice. Still buffet style? I believe so, yeah. Okay. All right, so we're just flipping through. And so, like, stand by. We got to get to some other pictures here. What's the event? He's making beer? That, uh, I think that's something else where he went to. I'm, I'm on his page, so it's a, okay. it's a, it's a different... Um, Things going on there. Oh, he did. Um, uh, he he was walking through the construction site without uh, um, work shoes on, and um, and stepped on a nail, so that went through the uh, went through his shoe and into his foot. So um, <laughs> and here's some more. So these were taken back in May. So he's been he's been dealing with this for a while, and the expectation is to try and open sometime uh, late this month or into November. Um, if any of you know or dealt with construction or contracting, especially now uh, post COVID, there's always some type of uh, hiccup and um, uh, breakdown in in supply chain or getting materials. see quite extensive in terms of um, the uh, work that's done. You can see the street here and see what happened, I believe, is that that um, the sidewalk here, when Metro came, they redid a lot of that um, that street area. We're not getting any um, shots of it there. All right, let's go back. Um, I believe his, uh, the other restaurant, uh, his brother, we're on um on Manchester. They now yeah. have wine and beer. Uh Greg did win a James Beard Award, so he'll he'll uh he'll talk about that. He went to uh Chicago. Uh so that was uh quite an accomplishment. And we got some more here. Uh this is now moving into June. Uh you can see here redoing the redoing floor all together. So he went all the way down and uh the gravel and rebar. You talk about a major. This is not. I don't know if it's just renovation. Okay, let's move back to James. No, this Beard. is this is a redo. Mm -hmm. and his grandson. Let's skip past some of those. That was back in Brooklyn and now Carolina. Okay, now we got some more. Hi, Greg. Is anyone on here who uh, worked with Greg on his rebuild? Maybe can speak to a couple of things. Let's just check them. We were hoping to get Michael on, um, Michael Banner. Um, is there anybody else that's on? No, I don't think so, but that's a good, that's a good question, Sarah. So again, just taking the time to see the extensiveness of a uh, couple of videos in here. Well, maybe while we're waiting for Greg, people can introduce themselves and their business and anything going on that we need to be supporting going into the last four, uh, the end of the year while we're waiting for Greg to come on. Sure, go ahead. So anyone wants to, uh, we can start to with uh, who? We can start with uh, Renee and move on through or Emma if she's still there and then guys introduce yourselves. Emma, there you go. <laughs> Oh, you got to take yourself off mute, Emma. Good morning, everyone. My name is Emma Maxey, and I am a former employee, um, first with Golden State Water Company as Supplier Diversity Manager, and I worked with the SBA for two and a half years. So um, i out here doing personal consulting and helping small business any way that I can, and uh, just a short bio on me. Thank you.
Greg, I'm unmuting myself. <laughs> I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. <laughs> anyway, I'm keep, hope, keep hope alive. <laughs> and, uh, I actually knew uh, Greg's father, Adolf. We were good friends. And uh, when they started uh, the hamburger place that they had in Marina Del Rey, I took him up to the La Brea kitchen so he could see the way that that was laid out. And then he sort of took some of those ideas when he opened that store. And so um, I have followed them, you know, to they opened the other place in, in the Rio Del Rey Bruins. And it, I have a long history with them. Anyway, um, most of you all know me from ERC, but I also work with other businesses in business development. And I'm currently working on two uh, development projects. You saw me in Hawaii for a long time because I was recently over there for a project I've been working on there for over the last two years. And they are rebranding themselves and building an event center that's based on a Western style. So if you want a ranch wedding, you're going to go to Kauai, the Garden State, for this venue. The other venue that I am worked on, working on is in Tanzania, and it is a restaurant and event center. It holds up to 3,000 people, and uh, that's probably where I spend the most of my time. I haven't been there, but that's where I spend most of my time. But locally, I'm doing ERC, helping small businesses. They took a, a leave of absence, a moratorium on uh, taking in new people, but they're opening it up, we pray, as they said in uh, the IRS, in um, January. So we're continuing uh, signing out. We're continuing to sign up people for this uh, grant program. And then I'll be working on another program, grant, government grant, grant also with the IRS. It's uh, for research and development dollars for people who do research and everybody does that in their business, but we really uh, available mm, okay, I'm great. Come on. structure and uh, people that are doing big development projects like Greg, and it's really going to be exciting. So you'll be hearing about that from me real soon. All right. Well, I am seeing a box that says Gregory Doolin on here. So I <laughs> am thinking that uh, uh, Brother Doolin is on with us. Uh, Greg Doolin, are you there? I see I see the box. I see you muted. Maybe you're still in the in your your meeting and just logged in. Um, we will wait here momentarily to figure that out. Um, in the meantime, let me finish just the last few photos. You can see a little further development here. All right, are you guys seeing that? Yes. So this is some of the painting going on now, so you can see they've gone, come a lot, lot further along. Uh, these are taken early September. And flooring system, drainage system. Uh, one thing that I, well, Greg will talk about is uh, he does hire from the community. And um, good morning. There, uh, there he is. All right, let me stop here. Good morning, Greg Doolin. Welcome to the community briefing. Thank you. Thank you very much. I was uh, sharing some uh, photographs from your uh, Facebook page on your renovation. Yeah, I, uh, I saw that. <laughs> in, include, well, that was the second uh, thing. I was showing some early stages back in May. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, 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 you, you know, when, when people are cooking, they say that uh, uh, sometimes you put your foot in it. Right. Uh, but even in the renovation, you put your foot in it, uh, literally, uh, with the, <laughs> with the uh, I think, the uh, nail that was in the foot. Uh, so uh, I hope that you're fully recovered now and making it on. So uh, Greg Doolin, the, the, uh, uh, certainly um, uh, in some ways needs no introduction. Uh, but uh, Gregory Doolin is the son of Adolf Doolin, uh, who uh, created, uh, I think, the first hamburger, uh, hamburger habit, I think it was, and then Aunt Kizzy's, and uh, Greg and his family have uh, taken on the um, 
second generation of restaurateurs. Uh, so he uh, is a, um, a graduate of um, Howard University. Uh, so we have two. Was that just last week that uh, Bryce was here? Bryce Fuellen, uh, who's in the uh, 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 food business with Every Table, also a graduate of uh, Howard University, uh, so, uh, Bison, and is also a uh, proud member of Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity. So uh, please welcome here to the virtual stage, Mr. Gregory Doolin. Well, thank you very much. That's quite an introduction. And that was Hamburger City. Uh, Hamburger not, City. Not Hamburger Habit, but uh, uh, that was a long time ago. And, uh, you know, we're at the final, final stages of completing uh, the restaurant renovation that I started about two years ago, maybe a little longer than that, actually. But it's been a long road. Uh, it's been difficult. Uh, there have been challenges. Uh, I had to survive COVID, uh, uh, the COVID uh, coronavirus crisis uh, during the process. And I'm, I'm just blessed to still be here and to be at the point of completion. Uh, it's just, it, it seems like a miracle. Um, but, you know, um, we started out wanting to create something that the community has been asking for for quite a few years. And that is a sit down restaurant where you can come and bring your family and your friends and have an evening out or a lunch or things like that. Uh, and we have designed the restaurant to accommodate those, those needs. Uh, I, I built a larger kitchen. Uh, in fact, I built two kitchens because during the pandemic, we were overrun with not only customers, but with delivery app uh, drivers picking up orders and we, we, we just got slammed. And so I actually uh, designed the new restaurant to have both a main kitchen, which I've always had, but now I have what I call an auxiliary kitchen, which uh, I designed to service my to-go orders, but also my catering business and my food truck. I have a food truck, uh, it's called Doolinville, which we do a lot of events uh, around town with. And, uh, and then we do a lot of catering. We do large scale catering events. Uh, you, know, some, you know, some of the things we do are, you know, like we did the Super Bowl the last time it was here. And uh, recently we did the topping out ceremony at the Intuit Dome where we fed uh, 1,700 construction workers, uh, you know, for their topping out ceremony. I actually got to sign the last beam to be installed in the, in the stadium. I did the same thing at SoFi Stadium about three years ago, and we fed 4,000 people at that on that occasion. But we wanted to build something nice. Uh, we have two great patios. I got a nice patio on the front. Uh, where you'll be able to sit and dine and see the train go by and see beautiful Crenshaw Boulevard as it's being redeveloped, as uh, we are sort of uh, tied in with Destination Crenshaw. And Destination Crenshaw is the 1.3 mile uh, African-American themed outdoor art expression. Uh, I'm proud to say that Destination Crenshaw is going to paint a 63 foot long mural in front of my restaurant. Uh, it's gonna be very po positive images and, and you know, Doolin's logo and family history. And it's gonna be a very Instagrammable piece of art that we're installing uh, in, in conjunction with the Destination Crenshaw uh, project. Um, I purchased the building down the street that I'm going to tear down and build a parking lot. Uh, that won't happen right away. Uh, I, I'll actually open the restaurant first, but I did plan and I will be building a parking lot down the road, which is going to you know, add convenience uh, to uh, the customers. And um, hey, Greg, let me let me interject right there. There's a, a good friend of mine that had a bakery back in uh, Brooklyn and he bought some property uh, adjacent to him um, and made it a parking lot. And his business tripled as a result of having available parking. So 
that's going to give you tremendous upside uh, when you get that done. So congratulations. His business tripled. I like the sound of that. <laughs> well, you know, and so, you know, this has been a long-term plan of mine. It's been a vision of mine to uh, create something that the community could be proud of. And I tell you, uh, since I started the hiring process, what I've noticed is that a lot of people that are coming to me looking for work are really good, qualified, excellent people with a lot of experience. But what I'm noticing is that most of their work experience is in Culver City, downtown, uh, somebody interviewed that works in Pasadena. And what they're, what the reason why they were attracted to come and work for us is because we're close to where they live. These folks live in View Park, they live in Lamert Park, they live you know, in Inglewood, and they're having to catch the bus, the train, or drive these long distances to work at these other uh, restaurant operations because they, they don't have a lot of opportunities or options in our own community. That was something I, I did not fully grasp until I started the, the, uh, the uh, interview process. And I, it just made me see that, that you know that that a lot a lot needs to be done, so that we have a, you know more options for folks to stay in our neighborhood to work and earn you know a, a, you know good good wages and things like that. So um, you know I'm kind of like rambling here. I don't really have a formal presentation, but I just want to give everybody an overview. It has been very tough. It's been difficult. Uh, I've gone through two contractors. Well, I went through one contractor. Uh, didn't work out with the first contractor. Second contractor has been a beautiful relationship. And, you know, so I, I, I've, I've, I've made a lot of mistakes. I've, I made a lot of mistakes. I've never done anything on this level or on this scale before. And so, um, you know, uh, I, you know, the next time I do it, I'll be much better at it. Uh, I, I've learned that you have to really surround yourself with good, capable, uh, honest people to help you get your projects done. Hey, Greg, I, I firmly believe that, uh, and, and quoting, um, I think it's Napoleon Hill, that in every adversity, there is a seed of equal or greater benefit. And very often people are afraid to, to take a bold step, fearing of making mistakes. And mistakes are going to happen. Um, it's, it's difficult to avoid them, uh, but it's, it's how you keep uh, marching through and being persistent. And so you've been persistent in it. You've, you've found some resources. So uh, I, for one, and I hope others join me in commending you and in, in sticking to it, um, oftentimes we uh are we're at we're faced with an obstacle and we're just about to give up and that that, that victory is is uh is right around the corner so um don't, don't beat yourself up on the mistakes that oh, i, I, I felt like giving up don't don't get it twisted i felt like giving up <laughs> there, were, there were many days if you come by here you'd see my head bowed low because of the obstacles and the challenges and you know just the things i had to overcome it was just uh it's, it's just been it's been a super uh, challenge. And, and, and even now, as I get ready to close, I got hit with one more challenge because there's a piece of equipment that was supposed to be here that's not here that's causing us to have another delay. And, you know, you know I almost want to wear, wear a disguise when I go out in public because everywhere I go, people are saying, when are you going to open? When are you going to open? And, I, and I'm just like, ah, you know. We're getting there, but but we're actually getting there. We'll, you know, we'll be opening soon. I've got a great, great, great general manager that I just hired. I've got a great team around me now. And I think that what we have created on Crenshaw is really going to be something special. It's going to be something, it's going to be a restaurant where people will be proud to bring their family. Uh, I have a, uh, a back patio that's going to be great for Sunday brunch. Uh, my wine distributor, San Antonio Wine, is in the other room right now talking to my GM about champagnes and wines and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so uh, we really tried to up our game. 
uh, and to really create something that, uh, you know, that I hope, I really hope that the community will be, be proud of. I hope that they will support. Uh, we certainly put a lot of effort into to creating something uh, wonderful. Yeah, no, I, 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 I believe it will. And, um, you know, you, uh, and I see Michael Bannon there. Michael, we're going we're gonna to have you chime in in a, in a moment there. Uh, Greg, you mentioned a, a, a food truck. And guys, don't get it twisted. This is not some uh, food truck or, or uh, what's he called, Roach Coach, you know, that you would see. Greg built and designed a mobile kitchen. It is a mobile kitchen. And, and share a little bit about, it's a, it's a two, uh, two-part system because you've got the, the, the kitchen part and then you've got a supply truck. So the two trucks go in tandem. Uh, share a little bit about that, and then and Michael, you're you're queued up there to, to join us in a few moments. First of all, let me just give a shout out to Michael Banner uh, and John Brown, uh, two gentlemen who came and helped me when I was struggling during the first uh, contractor situation, and they have both helped to to put me on put me on a path of success. Uh, Michael with his financial expertise and, and his financial contract contacts and John with his construction and uh, project management ex expertise. Uh, I dare to say I would not be here without those gentlemen. Now, as it relates to the truck, uh, I designed a food truck uh, that is that operates as a mobile restaurant. It's a two truck system where we have a, a truck that is a prep truck. And then we have the food truck is the food production truck and the two trucks, they back up in the end. And when they back up in the end, I have a long galley kitchen or a restaurant and I can go anywhere and produce large volumes of food with that particular design. So this is what we used during the Super Bowl. Uh, this is what we used during the feedings at the, the, the two stadiums that I talked about. And then when we do different types of you know, projects or big projects, you know, we'll, we'll roll out those big trucks and we can we can uh, do different types of things. The truck is called Doolinville. Doolinville it is a collaboration between the two restaurants that I own. Uh, obviously, folks are familiar with Doolin's Soul Food Restaurant, but there is also Hotville Chicken, uh, where I'm in partnership with Kim Prince. And that is our Nashville hot chicken concept right out of Tennessee. And so when we roll the truck out, we have the option of serving either the Doolin's menu or the Hotville chicken menu, or sometimes we do a little bit of both. But it's a very, it's a very efficient operation and the truck has been, uh, it's been well received and it stays, it's pretty much stays pretty, it stays busy. Good, it looks like we lost Michael. Um, so, I don't know if he's going to come back. I got, uh, Stephen, I got your note late uh, there. So Greg, tell us how Michael uh, Banner was was instrumental in, in kind of taking you um, to that that next level. And, and, you know, this is how our community can help support each other. Well, uh, he just, he has financial expertise. He's financed businesses all up and down Crenshaw. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing some, Finance, financing things with uh, with the business, and uh, he's just been helping me. You know, that's pretty. That's pretty much it in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. So, uh, tell us a bit about the 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 design of it and um, menu. You stay you're staying with the with the soul food, I imagine, or uh, will you be expanding beyond? that or um uh and also another thing i want you to share with us is that uh your experience with the um uh the jane beard uh foundation as well so i uh, we obviously stand with soul food that's that's all i know uh but we are enhancing the menu a bit with you know some really great salads i'm bringing up because i've i've remodeled the restaurant i'm able to attract some really talented kitchen and restaurant people uh you know I mentioned my my GM uh, uh Christian who has just a lot of corporate experience and he's you know running things for me right now we have a head chef coming in again who has a lot of experience 
And so we're able to attract really good talent. But we designed the restaurant to offer spaces to do different types of events. We have a large front patio that can be segregated off to do a private type of event or something like that. We have the interior dining space. And then again, we have the, the back, we, we're gonna call it Doolin's Backyard, which is our back patio space, which is my favorite. Uh, the two kitchens I think are gonna be, you know, a game changer. And, uh, you know, we're off in beer and wine. Uh, you know, we'll still do our holiday catering type of stuff that we've always done. And, um, you know, it's, uh, I, you know, it's, it's unique. Uh, we have a very large kitchen uh, because we have a large community to serve. Uh, this last year and this year, I was yeah. named a, last year I was a semifinalist for James Beard Award. This year I was a semifinalist and then became a finalist. Uh, James Beard Award uh, is an award that folks in the food industry receive for uh, being, you know, experts uh, at, their, at, their, at their level in different categories. Uh, I have been no nominated in the Outstanding Restaurant Tour category, which is an amazing category. Uh, so I actually went to the James Beard Awards in June of this year for the announcements. And it's just like the Academy Awards. It's, it's like the Academy Awards of the restaurant industry. We, uh, my category, I discovered when I got there was one of the last categories announced, you know, from a winning standpoint. We did not win, but it was an incredible experience to go to Chicago. And after the awards, they had a huge reception at, uh, at the train station with about 1,500 people. Uh, Chicago was beautiful. Um, we were honored to be uh, recognized on that level, given all the thousands and thousands of restaurants that exist in the United States. For us to be rest recognized on that level in that category uh, is just uh, is beyond anything I could have ever ever dreamed of. So it was, it was great. Uh, Greg, do you have uh, uh, maybe one or two minutes uh, to sort of summarize, and then what we're going to do? We have uh, have some questions. Uh, Colette, I saw your note there, um, and we'll have some time for you to share information about grants. Everybody loves grants. Uh, so, uh, give us sort of a 30, 30 second sort of summation, and then, um, we will take questions, uh, by, uh, you know, the reaction thing, raise your hand, and then I'll just go in order, um, of those who have, uh, questions or, uh, comments. Well, first of all, thank you again for having me. It's quite an honor to be here. Sorry, I was a few minutes late. Uh, I just want everybody to know that I tried to build the best restaurant facility that I could for our neighborhood, for our community. Uh, I thought about it and, uh, you know, we, we, we need more options. Uh, we're picking out the most beautiful plates and silverware and monkey dishes right now as in the other room while I'm doing this process. So, um, you know, it's going to be a place where hopefully uh, you will be proud to, to come and bring your family, out-of-town guests. Sunday brunch is going to be amazing. I'm bringing back the old Doolin's Sunday brunch. I pulled out my old biscuit recipe from years and years ago. Uh-oh. That's not going to start right away, however. That's going to start probably a couple of months after we open uh, because we have to learn. We got to learn how to handle this monster that I built. I built a monster uh, in terms of the restaurant. But uh, it's going to be a nice place for people to come for Sunday dinner after church. Uh, great place to book an event. Our patios are, are available and they're very nice. The back patio is really cool. I got I have a bar back there. I've got the stream lights going across. I got four TV monitors. It's, it's going to be off. To, it's going to be really really nice. So I really tried to build something that is nice and that the community can be proud of. One of the quick questions here is what's your what's your restaurant capacity going to be in terms of seating, you know, about approximately 160, about 160. OK, yeah, about 160. That's good. 
good. And that that does that include or exclude the the outside patio? That includes uh -huh. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Everything. Uh, well, nobody put their hand up, so I guess Colette, you're next now in terms of uh, Grant. Uh, no, no one had uh, uh, questions uh, for you. There are some comments here that I'm catching up to in the uh, chat, but uh, go ahead, Colette, and then I'll. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say thank you, Greg, for sharing um, about the the restaurant. We're all excited about it. You all know I, I we go to Doolin's as a family, like at least typically once a week or once every other week for some short ribs or fried chicken, something. So um, we're looking forward to the new restaurant opening and just really happy for you and um, all that you're doing and how you have the community in mind uh, to serve because we need restaurants like yours. So thank you so much, Greg. Thanks. I did see Kevin has a question. So before I go forward, I'll go ahead. I'll stop. Uh, Kevin, Kevin Harbour. We're not, uh, we're not hearing you if you're uh, if you're talking to us. Not yet. Technology. <laughs> you may have to uh, uh, where it says join audio in the uh, lower left. If you're on the uh, uh, thing, it'll as it'll say um, dial in or um, or Wi-Fi. So give that a shot. Still no. Actually, if you unmute, you might be able to do it. No. Okay. Go ahead, Colette. All right. Well, um, just wanted to share with there are a couple of grants and things and uh, information for small businesses. I just wanted to make sure that this group was aware of. So, Gregory, thank you for giving me a quick minute to be able to share that. Um, there's this one with Hello Alice. They've been doing some rotating grants. The next one um, that's available, the deadline is October 27th. So you've got a couple of weeks to do that one. Then they have a restaurant disaster relief fund that's coming. Um, that'll be December and then April. So these are grants that are coming up. Please put them on your radar and make sure that you guys are applying for them. And I can drop the links in. This one is kind of hard to find. If you just search for Hello Alice, Alice, it's not that easy to find. So I'll make sure to uh, drop this link in um, for you guys. Hello, Alice. They have a lot of other uh, supporters at C DoorDash Engage. So um, they've been bringing on programs and this is still kind of post pandemic. There's another program here. It's $10,000 worth of free online tools. It's a, a program with, I believe this is LA City. Um, and there is also another one with LA City um, for free business assessment and some support as well. But um, I encourage you guys to take a look at that. There's a new restaurant care program. SoCal Gas is involved in this one. This is coming soon. It opens October 25th. So a uh, $5,000 grant for independent restaurants um, as well. Okay. Um, also, if you guys have not, if you got PPP, or you had employees during the pandemic, you might be eligible for this employee retention credit. Please come and get some help applying. Um, if you have not done so already, I see Renee is on. Renee can also assist you with this. So um, oh, yeah, Renee, Renee's hit us up. Uh, pretty, we're pretty good on the ERC. Absolutely, there. absolutely, uh -huh. because it's a good program. It's a yeah. great program. Yeah. It's real money, and we want it back in our community. So do not go be, don't go to sleep on this. This is real money, pandemic uh, error money. Don't go to sleep on this program from the treasury. Uh, it's real money. You get a check, right? Like cool. you get a check. And I'm sure Renee can share some of her clients that have gotten a check. Yeah. Um, other thing is the 10,000 Small Business Program is opening Goldman Sachs. Gregory, Greg Doolin is a graduate of uh, 10K SB as am I. Um, a great program to help businesses to move forward. And um, I encourage those that, uh, I think you have to have at least two employees at this point and 75,000 in revenue. 
75,000 in revenue to be able to participate. There's an interview process, but um, I encourage you guys to look at this cohort program. There's a great support network and folks like Greg that, you know, maybe Greg, you talked about mistakes. Maybe we lessen mistakes by participation in some of these programs as well. And then on this Saturday, we are actually participating with the LA uh, Los Angeles City. This is a business and financial empowerment summit um, at BMO. Um, there are going to be all kinds of resources. There's a lot of procurement information. At the one of the last sessions for the day is about Olympics and Olympic procurement. So that may be of interest for you all in the day as well. I encourage you to RSVP um, and participate as one of the panelists and then see some of the resources that LA City has to bring to bear. Then there's also a procurement fair with One LA for anybody interested in procurement. And um, it's a kind of specialized program for the day nine to two LA area chamber is doing that. And then just wanted to mention for us, we've got the SBDC Small Business Development Center. I'm the director. We have a host of workshops available. All of our resources are free in addition to workshops, one-on-one -on -one advising to assist you and your business. Um, Joseph Duncan is one of our advisors. He has his own business, but he also consults with us. And we have other uh, advisors doing that with Core Financial, um, Restaurant Academy, big focus on financial literacy. So come and learn about money so that we can talk well about money in our community. Come and learn about business planning um, and so that you can get ready for those procurement opportunities and have money um, or are able to source money to grow, to build, to uh, get loans, um, build for construction, hire employees, all of that. So I likes money and food, right? <laughs> yeah, it's all good, man. Listen, <laughs> and we, we want to help you make it and keep more go. of it, right? So thank you. you thank you very it? much, Colette. Uh -huh. And uh, definitely support uh, SBDC and PCR. Uh, they bring a lot to the community. Thanks, Colette, so much. Yep. So, right. um, hey, hey, Greg, yeah. there's, a, there's a lot of good questions in the chat. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, probably too many to address, uh, you know, but um, if if we need to do something extra later or if I need to talk to some of the people that have questions directly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. One well, was about uh, the banquet oh, facility and right. And, that, and did Kevin, Kevin, did you work it out? I believe I did. Can you hear hey. me? Hey, yeah, Kevin. Greg, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Hey, uh, quick question. Uh, you know, we had talked about maybe a year or two ago when you uh, were on one of our forums about the tourism industry. You know, if we could bring tourism into the community, it would be a nice influx of uh, revenue that a lot of other cities are able to experience. So I'm just wondering if you're on the radar of the LA Tourism Commission with uh, Mayor Bass and, and her team. I speak to the LA Tourism Board every other day. They are very Good. excited about our location. And in fact, uh, we will be doing an LA Tourism event at, at Doolin's. Uh, for the first time, Doolin's uh, on Manchester is participating in Dine LA which uh, is sponsored by the LA Tourism Board. And it, that's a very good partnership. Um, and so, so yes, uh, we, the Tourism Board and I are working together to bring tourism to Crenshaw. And I'm sure that you all are aware that food tourism is a really big deal in the United States. And uh, my strategy, has always been to focus on the tourism market. Uh, 30 to 40 percent of my customers are, tour are tourists. And so, uh, yeah, I'm very, I'm very, uh, sorry about that. I'm very uh, tuned in to the tourism, to the tourism uh, industry. Definitely. We're going to bring tourists to Crenshaw for sure. And that all ties in with Destination Crenshaw and Sankofa Park, which is right down the block, and the rest of the Destination Crenshaw uh, in, environment. It's all tied in together. 
I'm happy for you because that 30% will help sustain you in the long run. And, uh, you know, you know, I'm a, a loyal customer and can't wait. Uh, so I'm not going to ask you the question. I'll just wait and I'll see you soon. That's okay. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you. Uh, we're we're going to have that fish you like too. Thank you, sir. You know, I'm waiting for that. <laughs> and the meatloaf. Yeah, and the meatloaf. And the meatloaf. We'll, we'll be, we will be. We will have a, pop, a Hotville pop-ups uh, in the in the uh, second kitchen for sure. Excellent. All right, Greg. Take care, man. Thank you, Kevin. One of the questions here is: Will the restaurant have uh, banquet facilities for rental? Yes, we have a, a, a you know a back patio. We're going to call it Doolin's backyard. And uh, we should be able to accommodate, you know, about 80 guests. It's a little smaller than it used to be because I enlarged the size of my business, my building footprint. But it's a great space for doing events. It's going to have the string lighting lights across this, these funky canvas coverings for shade. I've got four TV monitors back there. Uh, I'm going to have a wine bar back there, you know. It's going to be a really, really nice uh, environment for doing receptions and, you know, repasts and birthday parties and, and things like that. Okay, here comes the dreaded question. When, when are you opening? <laughs> so we are waiting on one piece of equipment, just one piece of equipment. And that's kind of holding up everything. Um, and you know, there are a lot of businesses going through the same, you know, process. Uh, but what I can say is that we start our training. And, and let me just say that for the first time ever, we have we've developed a five day intensive training program. Usually mm -hmm. um, in the old days, you hire somebody, you give them an apron and you, you know, tell them to go. But but we actually have corporate trainers who are helping us put together our program. And uh, the goal is to be able to give the best customer experience po possible in terms of service and, and things like that. And so we're taking, a, 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 we're, we're really putting forth a, a big effort in, in training. And so we're starting that process around the end of this month. Um, and then we hope to be open, you know, uh, the last part of this month or the early part of next month. What types of uh, employment opportunities are available at the restaurant? And you're still going to have the, uh, the, you know, the mobile kitchen and, and be doing large events. So I imagine you still need people to uh, uh, serve, you know, both internally and then also at the events. So what, what type of uh, opportunities are available and uh, where can they go to, to, to learn more about that? So for the first time ever, I, met, I actually hired a general manager. I've never had a general manager before. So I'm very excited about Christian, uh, who's already showing me uh, what he brings to the table in terms of being able to operate and run the business on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, that's going to enhance the service that we're able to, to provide to the customers while freeing, freeing me up to go out and bring in more business or to do more catering or, or just to relax. You know, I've been doing this for 36 years, you know, I, I want to relax a little bit also. Uh, for the first time, I'm going to have a kitchen manager. And again, to control my costs and, and to make sure the food is produced on time, to make sure my catering orders get out on time and all that kind of stuff. And so those are two key positions that I've never had before. Uh, and then I'll have the, the usual line server, line cook, cashier. We're going to have food runners. Uh, which is a new for me. Uh, and so we're not going to have table service where a waiter comes to your table and takes your order, but we're going we're gonna to have something called counter service where you'll come in and order, uh, place your order uh, at, the, at the window, at the register actually, and then uh, your food will be prepared and then brought to your table by a food runner. And so, you know, that's a, you know, that's something new for us. And so, you know, all of this is new. I'm experimenting, you know, things may change around. I may switch stuff around. We may say this doesn't work, that doesn't work. Uh, 
this works great, you know, so it's a learning, a learn as you go type of process. Uh, but, you know, we've done a lot of research and we think that what we're putting together should be, be good. Sounds good. I know you got Joseph's attention with the biscuits. So, uh, <laughs> uh, definitely, uh, uh, good, good eating and, um, you know, folks love to eat and, um, you're going to be able to provide a great opportunity for, uh, for the community. Um, it's, yeah, just imagine what we're serving on on Manchester served on plates and you're able to sit down and dine with your family and your friends and out of town guests. And it's right here in our neighborhood. You know, you don't have to go downtown. You don't have to go to Marina. You know, it's right here, uh, right here in our neighborhood. So um, I think that that's, uh, I think that that's, uh, uh, I hope that that's something that folks want. Uh, you know, on a sad note, it's, it's, it's lonely down here on Crenshaw. There aren't a lot, a lot of businesses down here. And so, um, you know, especially in the evenings, uh, you know, we, the, the neighborhood still has a lot, a lot of room for business growth and development. You know what I mean? Yeah. So hopefully if we make it and we're doing really well, that will attract- When you make it, not if, when. Well, I, yeah, when, when um, that will attract others to come down and open other restaurants and breweries and, you know, all the things that you need to make a community uh, special, to, to help to have a community support itself, to have a community that where you can employ folks in the, in the, in the community. And, you know, and, and, and have things that we can point to and be proud of, you know, uh, it all, it, it, it all starts, you know, we got to get it, we got to kickstart it and get it going. We're getting toward the end, but I got two, uh, Arnetta and Joseph, you have uh, some quick questions. Um, Arnetta, you're up. All right. Looking forward to the opening. Greg, have you ever thought about being open on holidays where some folks just don't want to cook but would love a Thanksgiving meal or Christmas dinner? Um, yeah, something to think about. You know, I actually have. Um, usually for Thanksgiving, we have a special call, you do the bird and we'll do the rest. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing that for over 25 years. And what that is, is we prepare the side dishes for folks for their holiday meal. You know, the dressing, the yams, the greens, all that kind of stuff. And when I finish doing all of that, I'm like exhausted. <laughs> exhausted because usually we feed a couple of hundred families and wow. we're doing, um, volumes and volumes of greens and yams and, and dressing. I mean, just... I mean, I couldn't even, you wouldn't believe how much we do. And it's very exhausting. Uh, and so, wh whereas I know Thanksgiving will be a great day to be open and a lot of people would appreciate it. We're just so exhausted after we do the, you do the bird special thing that we just haven't gotten to that point. But it's something that is in the back of my mind. Uh, I have seen other restaurants around town do that and they do very, very well. And that might be something that we do in the future. I don't know if I'll do it this year because we're so new, but uh, that's something that we'll, we'll definitely will consider in the future. Thank you. Joseph, you got something quick? Yeah, I don't really have a question. It's more of a comment. Greg and I go back. He said he's been doing this 36 years. I think I was, if not the first day, I was there the second day that Doolin's on Crenshaw opened. And so I'm very, very excited about this new situation. And uh, my plan is to be one of the first to eat whatever you cook in that new space. So I got to tell the story real quick. Joe and I go back to First Emmy Church. I was a new restaurant owner doing breakfast. F Fame brought 100 men in for breakfast at the same time. It was one of the worst experiences I've ever had in my life. Uh, it was very, it was, it was a nightmare trying to get all those breakfasts out. I, th I think there's still some dudes I haven't fed yet that came that day. I still haven't fed. So, but, uh, but. Well, well, I ate, 
That's all I can say. And I think Greg Sneed was there too. It sounds familiar. You know, you get older than memory, there, cells, Greg. memory cells, but it sounds, yeah. as soon as you said that, I was like, yeah, I think I was there. You know what? there. To come for breakfast all at the same time and everybody's getting an individual order, eggs over easy, eggs scrambled, eggs with cheese, grits, but they, that was, you know, so after that experience, I went to a breakfast buffet when I had those large groups, but I had to learn the hard way that you, you know, that was one of the mistakes that I made in the beginning. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Greg, so much. Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining. Please, uh, everybody, give Gregory Doolin a round of applause. Please support the business uh, when he when he opens. Um, uh, he's going to need uh, uh, folks to come and come repeatedly. Uh, Stephen Turner, who do we have uh, next week? You're on mute. Come off mute. Next week, we have Sharon Podeau from Martin Luther King Jr. Foundation. Yeah, Martin Luther King Jr. Health Foundation. Yep. Fantastic. Uh, so everyone, thank you. Greg Doolin, again, a uh, round of applause to you. And, uh, our, you know, our hearts, our support is with you. Um, you know, like Joseph, I've known you a long time. I can't, I can't, you know, rewind to know how far back it goes, but um it, it's somewhere between 35 and 40 years so uh yeah. it's definitely a pleasure uh to to have you on uh we wish you the best of luck and uh, mistakes will happen challenges will come but you'll uh persevere you'll be persistent and uh you will be a success or continuing success so uh we can't wait to test the food and hang out and uh enjoy and that, that'll be great that'll be great thank you for having me i really appreciate it Cool. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye -bye. I'll tune out and, and uh, come back and see us again. All, All right. right. Let me stop the recording here. I think we should have a community briefing uh, day or afternoon at, uh, at Doolin's. Uh, Agree. Nice. Agree. Yeah. Meet for lunch. <laughs> Great idea. I'm in. Great, we can do the patio, we can do the inside. And